Our capital city is not just a symbol of national identity, but also a pretty good representation of the progress of a nation. The 20th century saw an unprecedented increase in the number of capital cities worldwide. Only around 40 nations had official capital cities in the year 1900, but by 2020, that number had grown to more than 490% to 195 cities as new countries emerged out of the collapse of the British and French empires, the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia. Most countries have a single city as their capital. This is a place where politicians get together to pass laws, where the central administrative apparatus of the country are generally located and is basically the heart of the country. But some countries simply decided that when it comes to capital cities, one heart is never enough. Worldwide, there are 17 countries with two capital cities instead of one for a variety of reasons. But only one country in the world has three official capital cities, a unique arrangement designed to help ensure that no one part of the government has too much power, much like a checks and balances system in what is sometimes nicknamed the Rainbow Nation, South Africa. A Happy New Year to you and welcome to reason Africa. This is South Africa, a country of many peculiarities. It's the only place in Africa where you can swim with penguins. It is the second largest producer of fruit in the planet and the country is one of the few in Africa never to have had a coup d'etat and regular elections have been held here for almost a century. South Africa has three cities that serve as capitals. Cape Town as the seat of parliament is the legislative capital. Pretoria as the seat of the executive is the administrative capital. And Bloemfontein, the seat of the Supreme Court of Appeal, is the judicial capital. Meanwhile, the Constitutional Court of South Africa sits in Johannesburg, the largest urban area in the country. So why three capitals? It has to do with the country's transition from a British colony to an independent nation. While Canada and Australia remained federations after colonization, each previous colonial province kept some autonomy. South Africa, which consisted of four traditional colonies, Cape Province, Natal, the Orange River Colony and Transvaal became a single unitary state. And so, in 1910, when the Union of South Africa was formed, there was a great dispute about the location of the new country's capital city. Conclusions from negotiations between the British Empire and the defeated Boer Republics that ended the Second Anglo-Boer War and created the new country were these three capitals, the logic to spread the balance of power throughout the country. Both Bloemfontein and Pretoria were capital cities of traditional Boer provinces. Bloemfontein was the capital of the Orange Free State in 1854 and Pretoria was the capital of Transvaal. Bloemfontein is located in the center of South Africa, so it was logical to place the judicial branch of government in this location. The name comes from a Dutch word for fountain of flowers. The city hosted the Bloemfontein Conference in 1899, which was an attempt to prevent the Second Boer War. Pretoria had long been the home to foreign embassies and governmental departments. It was here that the peace treaty that ended the First Boer War was signed, but eventually the capital surrendered to the British during the Second Boer War in 1900. Its location near Johannesburg, a center of commerce at the heart of the populous Gauteng province, also made it a convenient location. Cape Town has always played an extremely important role in the country's history. From the late 1500s, the Cape Town area was a crucial stopover on the spice trade route and by the 1650s, the Dutch East India Company had used the area to establish a shipway station. Also known as the Mother City, it was the capital of the British Cape Province since 1814. Today, each of these cities has its charms. Pretoria is known for the exuberant jacaranda booms that appear each September. Cape Town has its rich history and the stunning famous landmark of the Table Mountain, while Bloemfontein exudes a laid-back hospitality. The United Nations recognizes all three capitals. At the time of South Africa's 1994 transition to a non-racial democracy, there were proposals to consolidate all functions of government in Pretoria, 
or alternatively, to build an altogether new capital city. Following the model of Washington DC in the United States, Canberra in Australia or Brasilia in Brazil. The idea was especially popular within the governing African National Congress party. Part of the appeal of the new capital was that it would be free of any vestiges or symbols of the hated colonial and or apartheid regimes. However, there were strong vested interests in favor of the status quo and a general sense that the costs would be enormous at a time when the new government was seeking to address more pressing needs such as housing, water, health and education. But the issue has never gone away and continues to resonate within the ANC. Something strange about this arrangement is that while the Supreme Court of Appeal continues to sit in Bloemfontein, the Constitutional Court, which is by far the most important, sits in Johannesburg. Cape Town and the province of Western Cape are both governed by the opposition Democratic Alliance and they are widely regarded as the best administered entities in the country. In addition, race still plays a role. The Western Cape is the only region in sub-Saharan Africa where black Africans are not the majority of the population. Coloreds, who are people of mixed white European and black African or Asian ancestry, are the largest racial group. South Africans have been known to say that Cape Town is white, Durban is Indian and Johannesburg is African. It isn't far-fetched when you consider that the modern-day Republic of South Africa came to be when then Prime Minister Hendrik Boward got a whites-only referendum through to turn South Africa into a republic in 1961. So, the reason South Africa has three capitals is in part the result of its political and cultural struggles as a result of the influence of Victorian-era colonialism as well as apartheid which is only one of the many issues the country faced since the 20th century. Sometimes choosing a capital is easier said than done. Typically, capital cities are big cities because countries choose their big cities as capitals. But in other ways, anointing a city as a capital actually makes it grow. Some countries have had a hard time deciding on which city should be the capital. For example, British India had a summer capital, Shumla, and a winter capital, Calcutta. There you go guys, let me know in the comments where you are from and what is the capital city of your country. If you liked this video and you're open to having some better understanding of the continent, consider liking it and subscribing to Reason Africa. Every single video will make you realize just how much more there is to know about Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.